Um, what was it like having the guys back from the you know 2008 national championship team on Saturday? It was pretty cool. They were actually um, out there just outside my window, and they were they had a tailgate for them out there, and and it was about noon before we do much, and and I walked out there and and got a chance to see a lot of those guys. Saw a couple after the game. Uh, it was pretty neat to have them back and to see some of those guys. So. Uh, you know, I, I wish we had played better and won a football game for them. But, um, you know, it, it was kind of neat to watch those guys reminisce about all the things that happened for them. Can you reflect on this group of seniors that you have right now and kind of what they've, they've meant to you? Well, you know, they've won, won a lot of football games, um, you know, obviously leading up to this year. And, uh, you know, some of them are fourth-year guys, some are fifth-year guys. You know, guys like uh, the fifth-year guys like uh, Andrew Clyde and Dale Matthews, they've been around a long time. Some of the fourth-year guys, not as much, but uh, been tremendous contributors. And you just look at the Justin Rubens and the John Yarbroughs, and those guys have done an unbelievable job for the program. And uh, so, you know, I, I think – They'll all be successes, and, and hopefully some of them get to continue to play after after their time's up here. Hey, Russ, with all, with all the injuries this year and, and cutting into your depth chart, is there a way to build your roster size? And are you going to pursue that as you move into the off season? Well, that's kind of been a uh, you know a thought process of ours and how we can build the roster. Um, there's just certain ways. I mean, there's certain parameters that, that prevent you from really getting the roster up to 95 and 100. Um, uh, you know, I've said this before, and, and, and sometimes it's a good thing and a bad thing. You know, Richmond's academic standards are so high now, and it's great for the University of Richmond, and it's great for the people that get to come to school here, but we can't, we never can attract somebody that just knocks on our door and says, Oh, by the way, I got in school. I'm a pretty good football player, and you just can't you, you can't get those guys. It's 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 really challenging to get in school here, and, and and rightly so. I mean, Richmond's academic reputation is is huge, and and uh, so we understand that. Um, like I said before, uh, I think I said on my radio show, we're gonna we're gonna try to have a walk on tryout for anybody that's on campus here to. Uh, uh, to come out and, and try out and, and see if there's football players on campus right now that that would would want to play and, and take a shot at this. So uh, we'll see how that goes, and that'll happen in January. Um, but you know, you're gonna have to build it in ways like that. But you know, it's hard to build it just by saying let's just take some guys to get in school on their own. Uh, it just um, you know, it's, it's pretty pretty tough and pretty challenging. And of course, Jimmy Laycock's final game is on Saturday, and you've coached with him for many years. What lessons did you learn from him? Well, shoot, I was such a young coach just starting out. Um, he gave me my first opportunity as a restricted, they were called restricted earnings coaches back then. I was making $6,000 a year. Um, I'll never forget the the story, and again, I want you guys to talk to him too. So I don't want to spend all the time talking. But um, when I came, I was a GA at South Carolina, and I came, and he said we got a restricted earnings job, and and I came up and interviewed, and and really didn't know anything. And I think they take basically back then they would take anybody uh, that thought they could live on six thousand dollars a year. I was single, and and kind of felt like I could. And I'll never forget, uh, as I was getting up out of his office, he said, uh, he said, oh, by the way, I, I expect you here on this date. No matter what happens, you will be here on this date. And I actually got a job offer from Tulsa for $17,000. And I made the decision. I said, I, I, I just kept looking at Coach Laycock in the and I, got, I better not do that. I'm going to, I'm going to William Mary. And and obviously you 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 make those decisions. And I met my wife there and and had a great time and 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 won a lot of football games. So it was a great, it was it was the right decision. But I think if I would have walked out of there and he kind of wouldn't have glared at me at that point in time, I probably would have went to Tulsa. Probably not sitting here right now. 
and everything would have changed. So I actually owe him that too. But uh, uh, six thousand. I mean, I, I was I was starving. I was eating pretzels out of the SID's office for lunch. But you can have, I can have a million stories like that. And all I think all coaches could have stories like that. Coach, what do, you, what do you need to see out of what do you need to see out of Joe to make sure he is ready and back fully from his injury to start on Saturday? Well, he's back. I mean, and in, in, in he's fully healthy. Uh, you know, the, he went through the concussion protocol. He's he's got the go ahead. He's going to practice today. So. That's not, you know, if if, also, if you had an MCL sprain or, you know, you got to look at those things. But with the concussion, pro, they're not walking back on the field unless they are healthy and they feel good about him. And, and obviously, Joe's uh, gone through the protocol, so we feel good about, you know, him having the ability and being effective however we use him. This is your 21st Capital Cup. You've coached on both sides. Let's ask a question. Okay. Then, yeah. Derek, go just ahead. Just one, one more. No. Okay, one more. I'm okay. just going to say, you know, what is special about this series? Or what's your favorite memory from? I can remember um, a tremendous series. I mean, it's I, I, I rem there's so many different things I remember about the series all the time. But, you know, obviously when I got there, we won our seventh game my first year there in 85 and beat Richmond. And uh, I remember how cold it was and, and Tom Bratton going to the bookstore and buying uh, those beanie caps for us and handing them out to the coaches. Tom Bratton, I, I'm sure you guys remember him, excellent football coach. And my mom came to that one, and, and I just remember the game. I remember Curtis Jefferson running all over us, uh, coming out with the triple option at halftime. We, I think they had one first down or no first downs. Brought him, Richmond brought him in, ran triple option, and, and just like uh, I mean, it was it was brutal, and we lost that football game. Uh, I remember, you know, my first year here as an assistant, Lane Lane Campbell lighting us up, and and um, you know, just so many games and so many important games. The the the, uh, the, the year we won a national championship, um, kicking a field goal. Um, to win that, to get us in, probably don't get in the playoffs and kick a field goal that year to to, uh, to win that game. And I'll never forget, in overtime, uh, they ran a uh, kind of a double. I can't remember the play, but I just remember the guy running down the sideline wide open and underthrew him in overtime. And people are shaking their heads because th those are vivid, vivid memories of, you know, you win a game and there's so many plays that, that determine whether you win a game, so many things. Uh, just a great rivalry. And our, I know our players and, and Darius and all these guys, you know, love the game. And uh, so I ask him a question and then go ahead. Darius, there's going to be a boatload of emotion on their sideline Saturday. How do you guys match that and get yourselves close? You probably can't reach that level, but how do you get, try to get close to it? Well, well I think we can reach that level. Um, you know, we're playing for our seniors right now. These guys, like you said, Andrew Clyde, that's leaving. You know, I was just downstairs with Andrew, matter of fact. Uh, and he's in our meetings with us. You know, he's the same position group. And he's one of the guys that's kind of been consistent throughout the years, you know. Like, he's been a winner for a while. And he's one of the things that's remained consistent. I just feel, you know, the need to go out there and play for him. And it's, I'm sure a lot of the other guys feel the same way. You know, just send them out on a good note. Hey, Darius, you're from down that way. Did you consider William and Mary? And if so, what made you come to Richmond? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I am uh, 15 minutes away from William and Mary if you drive like I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was recruited by William and Mary as well. You know, so I've, I've sat in uh, Coach Laycock's office and uh, met with him personally. And what, what it came down to is what I wanted to, you know, compete for championships. And uh, I think both, both of the schools, are like, have a high standards academically. But I think at the time when I was uh, making my decision, I felt, you know, Richmond had an edge, and I felt like I can be a huge part of the team here. Mm -hmm. Growing up, Jimmy was probably the first football coach of which you were ever aware. Uh, can you uh, kind of put into words what his presence just in that area? Well, yeah, he definitely has a presence. Like, uh, to have a, like a facility named after yourself while you're still coaching is definitely like a big deal. So. He was for sure like a big name in the area of Williamsburg, Yorktown, that area for sure. 
Bobby, if I may go back to you for a second. Uh, you, what's it like to work as an assistant for Coach Laycock? Does he give you autonomy? Is he demanding? Uh, yeah, very, very demanding. Uh, hard to work for. Uh, expects greatness from you. Expects you to do your job. Um, you know, but as a defensive coach and as a defensive coordinator, yes, he gave me autonomy. To, never walked in and said, we need to do this or do that. He let me coach. He lets his coaches coach. But he is very, very demanding on coaches, players. And uh, and I think that's why people respect him so much is because he, he you know, he, he forces you. He, he demands that he demands that you do your job and do it the right way as a player and as a coach. Uh, you know, and, and you know, obviously, I learned so much from him. Um, you know, but um, yeah, he's. But again, I, I spent 13 years there, and 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 you know, maybe other than a, lo a tough loss on a Saturday, walking in on Sunday, every other day, I, I loved walking in there and, and, uh, and enjoyed my time there. When you say demanding, if, if, thing, if you do something that doesn't work, does he come and demand an explanation of why you did something? Or? Oh, I've sat in a room, yeah, where he, he, he kind of pounded it and said, you know, what's going on? And, and, and as a coach, you kind of say, uh, and maybe this is kind of where I've got it, got it from him too. As a coach, you say, well, I told him to do it this way. He just didn't do it that way. And the coach says, uh-uh, uh-uh. If he ain't doing it that way, it's your fault. You better figure out a way to make sure he does it this way. Um, and, you know, he would he'd say, get in your meetings and figure out what's going on. And then he'd come back and say, now why? And um, – you know, and I actually learned that, you know, learned that from him that that you, you can't just say, you just can't, you can't just put it on the players and say, I told him to do this. He didn't do that. Therefore, it's his fault. It's whether you didn't tell him correctly or, you know, sometimes you're just not good enough. I mean, sometimes you just say the guy is not good enough. Well, let's put him in better positions to succeed. And it was always kind of kind of like that. Did you ever want to say, well, your offense isn't doing so well either. You know? I better not comment on that. Um, <laughs> there, I, 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 could sit, I, I could sit here for five hours and tell you some stories, uh, but I'm not going to. But, uh, um, you know, he's just he's a great football coach no question about that and uh i mean he's he's molded a lot of you know he's molded a lot of great people great coaches um you know he's he's developed players that have t come turned out to be fantastic coaches whether it's in the nfl or college you know and and uh and that that's that that'll be a big part of his legacy not only wins but you know how he developed players, and, and you know, he, I know you guys have written about the Tomlins and the McDermotts and the, and the um, uh, Dan Quinns and those people, and um, you know. But obviously, Coach had a lot to do with with their success. Anything else? Hey, can I sneak one more in? And, and that is, as December nineteenth uh, comes upon us, have you modified your approach in, toward this second early signing period, as opposed to last year when? People were still trying to figure it out. Um, no, you know, we just actually the, we made a, a commitment uh, to make sure. And even last year, we knew we had to get them in the summertime. But we made more of a commitment to what we do in the summer. Um, you know, we actually had two days of, you know, what we, you know, we, where we had our top prospects in at the end of July when the facility was done. So I think that that really helped us out to get them in there to see that and to get them together. You know, we had a Friday and then a Monday, and we probably got our top, you know, 30 to 40 prospects in at that point in time. And so that you know, we we kind of geared that up and and but but going leading into it, you know, you know we're gonna we're gonna sign a good class, you know, the early signing period and just like probably a lot of people are.